Hello, this is Hippie Ben from the ECF Forum, I'm here to talk to you today about the KFUN version 3.1. Uh, this is a uh, 22 millimeter stainless steel silica based rebuildable atomizer. Uh, comes from, well, I got it from Svomesto in Russia. Um, costs about $200, it's a little bit cheaper, but at that point, you know, it, it, it's $200. You can also get it from a German vendor, uh, digitalsteam.de. Um, although I haven't really heard all that great things about that vendor so I don't know if I'd recommend getting it from there but you can also get it from Cloud9 Vaping in the UK and uh, Cloud9 will give you the, the fastest shipping uh, between the UK and the US is pretty good you should have it in about a little bit over two weeks uh, whereas ordering it from Russia it took about a month and a half to get here um, I've had it since mid-March so it's getting on about two months and you know, I, I feel that I've become uh, comfortable with it. I understand how it works and whatnot. So I'll go uh, I'll go through real quick. Tell you what I like about it, what I don't like about it. I'll show you how to change juices on it. I'll uh, rebuild it for you, and just like uh, you know, give you my tips and tricks to you know, hopefully help anybody who might be having trouble with it when they first get it or is considering purchasing it or you know anything like that so let's uh let's go close up and uh we'll talk about what it does okay so the tank holds about three and a half milliliters of juice um there's three holes down here this is your air control screw uh, you tighten that screw you loosen that screw and that'll uh, control the draw of it and you know by the way it works that will also control the amount of juice that gets pulled into the chamber so you know adjusting that will adjust both your airflow and your juice control that's the air intake hole so you can flush mount this on any uh, device and you don't have to worry about you know restricting your airflow at all and here is really what the uh, the new addition in the version 3.1 is. Say it's, uh, it's like a, a check valve where you know you can fill your juice from there. You put a special tip on a bottle, pop it in there, squeeze it and fill it up. I'm not really a fan of that because I find that the higher VG juices that I use, um, you know, it, it just it it doesn't really work that well. It's too small of a hole. So, you know, you're squeezing, you're squeezing, and then finally your tank fills up and your hand's killing you by the end of it. So what I do is the classic fill method, which is what I'm going to show you. I won't, I won't show you the, the fill valve because that, that's not what I use. Uh, classic fill method, in short, you know, you pop the top off, you put your juice in, you put the top back on. Uh, much quicker, much easier, and it's what I like to do. So it does come with... A, uh, its own drip tip that screws in the top right there unfortunately I don't have it with me right now my fault so I can't really show it to you uh, but that's what you'll see in all the pictures of it but that does come off and it comes with a 510 drip tip adapter you can put any 510 drip tip in and then that screws right in the top I don't really like the, uh, the mouth feel of the included drip tip so I use my own also, I think it looks better on there with the smaller drip tip, but, you know, that's my own aesthetic uh, appeal. Um, let's talk about the uh, 510 connection real quick. It is adjustable. You know, you can, uh, where's the screwdriver? You can take this screw, and depending on what device you have, you can make that screw come out further. So, you know, if it has a deep 510 connection, you can make that connection or you can tighten it up if it's not a deep connection and you know that'll help you with flush mounting it um, let's see what else yeah so uh, yeah let's uh, let's get into changing uh, juice and whatnot and uh, tear it apart for you so I'm the type of vapor who I, I don't vape the same juice all day long um, one day is probably the longest that I get out of a particular flavor. 
So I'm always changing juice, and it's actually really easy with this uh, atomizer. You know, you take your juice bottle, you open it up, you pop the nipple off, then you unscrew this. Now, the most important thing is that you want to cover up the air, uh, the air hole. Uh, that'll stop any juice from, you know, because it, it works on pressure. Um, sort of like when you put a straw into a drink, you put your thumb over the top and you pull it up and all the liquid stays inside. That's exactly how this works. So if you have that open, it's essentially... Um, the top is your thumb over the straw. So when that seal is created, it won't let any juice flow out. When you open that up, you want to block what is the bottom of the straw to hold everything in. So, you know, pop your thumb over that, unscrew this, Put it to the side and then you just take your bottle take the atomizer and you just dump the juice right back in and then you pull it up like that wait a bit for all the uh the liquid to run down should do it wipe that off a little bit and well i won't put that together yet um this bottom section here that you access by taking out the 510 connection undo the screw here this comes right out this is the uh, the collector tank or the overflow tank if you if your airflow is too tight or you draw too hard you may pull juice too much juice into the chamber and then it'll go down through the uh, the air hole and it won't leak anywhere because it'll just end up in this chamber and you know that'll also be beneficial if you know when you fill it up you um, you know you create pressure inside the juice will end up there it won't come running out so that's a really nice feature of it um, yeah so next what I do is I take off the tank just unscrews like that it's actually a three-part tank but there's really no reason to take it apart unless you want to put the plastic part or the metal part in so you know you just treat it as one piece and then you take off the atomizing chamber and then there's your wick so what I do at this point is I just get some hot water running out of the sink I hold this under there the hot water you know goes over rinses all the uh, the liquid out of the uh, wick I rinse this off I rinse the tank off and I rinse the top off I also rinse the drip tip just to keep it clean and if any flavor ends up hanging around in there. I don't know why it would, because it's stainless steel, but I do it anyway. So I'm gonna go rinse this real quick, and then I'll be right back. Okay, and we're back. So now, all these, uh, these parts have been rinsed, and they are ready for more juice. Okay, all right, so. I rinsed the wick, I blotted it with some uh, paper towel, and then I hit it real quick with a hair dryer just to make sure it's uh, totally dry. Uh, that way you don't have to deal with puffing through a bunch of water in order, you know, before your, your vapor production comes back up. Um, what I'll do right now is I'll take the chance to, uh, you know, throw a tip in here. Uh, you may notice that as you use it, you get slightly burnt or what what's what tastes like a dry hit even though you know it's wicking fine or whatever and what causes that is because of the way the uh, the airflow works on here you'll uh, get a bunch of buildup uh, carbon buildup on your coil up top and you won't on the bottom because you know the airflow is going over that and that's what's getting hot so you know that collects up top and you know you, there's also there's legs here they're short so when you do get that carbon build up the legs heat up before you know the rest of your coil and that can cause a uh, slightly burnt hit so what i do when that happens or between you know every every time i fill it up i take a look at the coil if it starts to look real uh, like it has a bunch of build up on there i'll just throw the bottom together uh where here we go pop it on my mod and then just uh, dry burn it. And 
once the uh, the coil starts to glow evenly, then you know you're good to go. Just blow off the ash, and uh, you should be good for another few tanks. Uh, obviously, the amount of time in between having to dry burn it will differ depending on the juice that you use. Darker, sweeter juices will cause more buildup quicker than uh, clear or less flavored juices. Right. And then at this point, you know, I've already got the uh, the collector tank on there, so I'll just leave that on. Usually, I put that on after the tank just because it provides a nice base for it when it's not on there. So you're going to take the uh, the wall or the I guess the atomizing chamber part, and you're going to take your wicks and you're going to fold them over just like this. You know, you get them in there, you bend them around sort of in an S shape, and you take the chamber, and you slide it right over. Ooh, don't do that. Like I said, you bend your wicks over, you take your chamber, slide it right over there, and then screw it down. So what you're left with is something looking like that. Um, you can, you know, just gently push these down, the, the wick down a little bit. I don't really do that because if you push it too much you can resti restrict the uh, the wicking of it and uh, it really doesn't get in the threads they're they're so fine that it, it doesn't really tear them apart the the wick apart so I, I don't even worry about it as long as it's in there and it's not you know like poking out the top or poking out the bottom you're good then I take the uh, the chimney put it right on there and if I can line up these threads there we go. And then I like to give this a good, you know, snug turn. That way, when you take the top cap off, which does have an O-ring in it, you know, you're not unscrewing this. Because then, you know, you have to get in there with the juice and tighten it up, and that's a pain. So I find it better just to give that a real nice, uh, tight twist. Then I take the tank, throw it right on there. And actually, let me show you this real quick. I don't know if you can see, but there's actually a lip in there where the air, where the uh, O-ring goes in. So even if your threads or your tank is covered in juice, when you screw it on there, it doesn't push out the uh, the side and make a mess. It, it, very well designed in that regard. Then to fill it up, thumb over the air hole again. Take your juice. Let me just pop this back on before I forget. Make a mess. So you take your juice squeeze it in there fill it right up not quite to the top but you know uh, a little bit there maybe like three threads worth of space i'm not going to fill it up right now because i'm about to rebuild it and then you know you'll get the visual of it then then as you're holding your thumb on the air uh, the air hole you take the top gently put it on and you just get it started don't want to tighten it down at this point because that will create the pressure which will force juice into the chamber and then go up inside and fill up your collector tank and when it's in there you're not vaping it so why do that and actually let me back up a second here if you look down in there let me back up again so you have these channels and what these channels do is as you draw air up you create pressure inside here and the juice will go into those channels up inside into your wick. Um, the reason why I want to call your attention to these channels is when you put your uh, your tank on there for filling it up you notice that you know you, you want to know where at least one of those is. On this one it, it's a little bit off to the side from the logo. So put my tank on. I fill my juice. Still have my thumb over the air hole. Gently set my top cap on. And then I tilt it up like this and I make sure that that channel is facing up and then you know you let the air bubble come up you wait a little bit it, it take like five ten seconds you just wait a bit and then same thing as when you're popping the uh, the top on a cardo tank you want to center the air bubble over the channel so then when you tighten it up you're not forcing juice out so you, know, you give that a nice snug up there turn it back pop your drip tip on and you're good to vape. Alright, now let's rip it down again and I will show you how to rebuild it.
Right, I'm just gonna stop the camera and restart it real quick just to uh, make sure I don't hit the, the cutoff on it. Okay. Let me grab a uh, Phillips screwdriver here. Just in case. Okay. Take off my wick and coil. Alright, and to rebuild this, I'm using two millimeter silica wick. I find that that works really well. Um, it wicks well, and you don't really have to stuff it in there too much. So two millimeter, that's what I recommend. And I'm also using 30 gauge canthal. You can use whatever gauge works for you. I'm using a mechanical mod, which I need to lock. A uh, mechanical mod, so to control the, the wattage that I'm vaping at, you use the uh, resistance wire to get the, uh, the vape that you're looking for. If you're using a power regulated device with variable voltage or variable wattage, you can uh, use higher gauge wires, you know. And in general principle, the more wire that you have in contact with the wick, the better flavor you're going to get and the more vapor you're going to get. I'm actually waiting on some 28 gauge so I can get the amount of coils up and play around with that. But 30 gauge works pretty well for me. This is actually really, really dead simple to uh, measure the amount of wick that you need. You literally take it, you go right across your hand like that, that's the perfect amount. Snip it. And then what you want to do is you want to fold it over three times and create sort of like a, uh, a bow tie shape. Uh, yeah. So you take it, fold it in thirds like this, and then this, again you can measure with your body, it comes out to be just a little bit thicker than your thumb, or my thumb anyway, you know, whatever. All right? actually let me cut some wire first, I'm getting a little ahead of myself. But now you see what to do with the wick. So for the wire, I take this, and I like to just give it a torch. You really don't need to use a butane torch like this. I have it from when I was doing Genesis atomizers, and it just makes a really quick job of it. Also windproof. And what torching it does is it takes some of the tension out of it and makes it more flexible. So when you wrap your coil, it doesn't just spring back into whatever shape it feels like being. So, torch this. Okay. And I just like to blow on it, make sure I don't burn myself. Straighten it out. And then once you torch it, it's just much nicer to work with and it's more beneficial with the thicker wires than the, uh, the thin wires, so. Now, I recommend using a pin. I use a sewing pin you know, just for holding things. Um, I find that this works perfectly. And with the K-Fun, you really don't want a tight uh, wrap of your wire around the wick because that will restrict the amount of juice flow that gets to the coil and it'll build up gunk a lot faster because you know there's not as much juice going through. So you'll find that the actual wick gets carbon buildup inside of it rather than if you use the pin and have a looser wrap just the wire will get build up on it so that's what I recommend and what I do is again you just fold your wick into those thirds that little bow tie shape you take the pin and you just hold it in your fingers just like that just to add you know that extra space to the wick Holding your thumb and forefinger like this, take the wire, put it right in there, leave yourself some room there, it'll make it easier to put it on the actual device. Get this bottle out of here. Okay, so then I take it and I wrap. And I, I just like to give it, 
I like a uh, three wrap 30 gauge configuration. That gives me about one 1.1 .1 ohm. And I find that that works really well. I back it off a little bit. And I hold that and I go over here and I just undo a wrap like that. Okay. And you want one wire facing up, one wire facing down, just like that, just because of the way you attach it. So I have three wraps on top and four on the bottom. And that'll give me about one 1.1 1 .1 ohm. Uh, make sure that's centered on your wick. Just pull it over a little bit. Okay. Uh, get my screwdriver and to attach it you just pop it right on there I recommend going around the outside of the uh, of the screws and that just gives it uh, more room and I find that that takes the legs further away from the air hole which will give you less chance of getting a uh, hot legs or a burnt hit or whatever so I take the wire I put it around the outside of the screw and I bring it down and I hold it and I do the same thing with the other side take it around and hold it so now you got something that looks like this your wick should be running diagonally across it uh, you know at about 45 degrees not straight across and not like that you can do it that way with different uh, wick configurations this is the way I do it I haven't really played around with the other ways too much and I don't really have the patience to wrap a coil through a circle. I find, you know, this just works better for me. So you take your screwdriver, tighten the screws down. Come on, there we go. Tighten the screws down, get them nice and snug. Pull your wires away. Then I grab my multimeter, which is one of the most important things you can have if you're doing rebuildables. If you don't have one and you're rebuilding, I definitely recommend picking one up, especially if you're using a mechanical mod. So you take the leads, pop them right on the screws. Actually, let me raise, ooh, no, getting ahead of myself again. I have to pull out the pin because obviously that conducts. And once you have it on there, the, the space is already there, you don't really need it anymore. Um, I like to space my coils out evenly. That also gives you less chance of getting the equivalent of a hot spot where one part of your silica will heat up more than the rest. You really want even heat. That will give you the best vape. Then you want to get a screwdriver. Flathead works best. Right under there and you want to pull your wick just a little bit up off the, uh, the deck there. That way you don't short out against the body of the atomizer. Uh, the closer your coil is to the body or the air hole, the more flavor you're going to get, the further away you're going to get more throat hit. So you can play with the vape that way a little bit. Pop that up. Okay. It's about where I like it. Alright. That'll, uh, that'll work well enough to get me a reading. Okay, and that is coming out to 1 ohm, 1.1, 1 ohm, right where I like it. So, take the wires and just give them a twist. They pop right off. And, you know, you just play with the, uh, the coils a bit. You don't want them touching anything other than the wick. You want it evenly spread out right over the airflow, right over the air hole, I mean. There we go, that's about right. And then what I also do is, I don't know how well you can see, but <clears throat> because of, <clears throat> excuse me, how I wrap the coil, the side where I was holding the wire against the wick isn't as tight around it as the other side because, you know, that that's just mechanics of wrapping it. So what I do is I put my finger on top of the coil and I just go in and I lift just that leg up making sure it's touching the silica all the way through. Again, that helps prevent hot legs or anything like that. Okay, there we go. We have a wick and coil on there. I like to give it a little twist just like that. So, you know, your bow tie is bow tie shaped rather than being flat and that works best for putting it around like that. 
And if you'll excuse me real quick, I'm going to go get a drink so I stop coughing. And I'm also going to grab some nail clippers because I forgot to grab those. My fault. Okay, and we're back again with the tools that we need. Alright, so what you want to do is you want to trim the silica to about there. You know, you, you don't want this extra flopping around just getting in the way. So, you know, nail clippers are definitely the best tool that I've found to do this. Just gives it super clean cut. No more uh, fraying. Just real worry free. Oops. I gotta stop dropping things. Then I do it on the other side. Just gonna reposition my coil real quick because I dropped it. Okay, that should be good. Make sure we're not touching the screw there. Okay, cool. So, the next step that you do is make sure all those fibers are out of there. Is, uh, that's just not necessary. Alright, take the atomizer chamber. And again, you, uh, you just fold your wicks over like this. Pop this on. Screw it down. And there you go. And then once you're in here, you can also get a uh, good idea of exactly where your coil is. So, you know, if you're anal about it, you can just adjust it one more time. That looks pretty good. I'm satisfied with that. So, I'll move on to the next step. Now, this is the juice I'm going to be using. Uh, cool Cumber Melon from the Vapor Chef. Very good. I recommend it. Definitely one of my favorite liquids. And as you can tell, a giant bottle. And I just take the dropper and I put a little bit on the wick. And then that will just help with the initial wicking so you don't have to draw juice in there onto a dry wick. You know, it will already be started and good to go. And like I said, you just leave the uh, the wick in there nice and loose because you don't want to pack it down and block those channels because then it won't wick. You'll get all kinds of dry hits. Not fun. Then I take top part, chimney, put it right on there, give it a nice twist down, make it nice and snug. Take the tank, put it right on there, wait for the helicopter to go by. Take the collector tank, and there's actually a, uh, a little insulator in here, if I pop this out. You definitely don't want to lose that, or your 510 connection is just going to be a giant short, and you'll have to wait for another one to come in. You can get spare parts uh, very easily, much easier than the, uh, the Golden Greek stuff. So if you do mess that up, you can get another one, but you don't want to mess it up. Pop the tank right on there. Look how nice that threading is. You just, whoo, very nice. Okay. So thumb over the air hole. Get your top ready, and then you just take your juice. I don't really like these dripper bottles. I find that you know it it takes a lot of effort just to you know fill it up, especially with a large tank like this. I much prefer nipple top bottles, but it works. So fill it right on up, and hopefully you can see from this camera angle. You know it's kind of a a high angle so I'm hoping you can see down in there just to where you know the level is that I stop filling is right about there so you know there's some threads still at the top you know alright put the top on set it just a little bit flip it over now this is a really thick liquid so I'm gonna let it chill for a bit just to make sure that that bubbles up there so I don't force juice inside the uh, the chamber uh, it's probably about there 
you, you can definitely see what's going on if you use the uh, the plastic tank but I'm an idiot and I put citrus juice in there so it's cloudy so I don't really like to use it so I'm using the stainless steel plus I like the look on the paps so pop your 510 connection in usually I do this before I fill it up just to make sure that whole bottom sealed but you know the, the, it'll work just fine it won't be the end of the world if you forget to put it in and then put it in afterwards but if you do end up forcing juice to the collector tank and you don't have that screw in there it's going to come out the bottom so drip tip and there we go rebuilt and ready to go okay do this now with this mod it has an adjustable uh, center pin so what I do is I take the case on I screw this on the bottom get it nice and flush there and then I just make sure that center pin is making contact with it pop it on my mod uh, let's check the voltage real quick because I'm curious four volts right on the dot so this is one ohm at four volts okay so after I fill it up what I do is you know I hold it actually okay sorry about that the uh, the card on my camera got full so I had to uh, restart this part um, anyway as I was saying what I like to do after I fill it up is you know you just pull it up fire it a little bit pull on it fire it again and you'll start to hear when that wick is real saturated and you just want to get the juice going around and you know wicking real well so here we go Uh, you can chain vape this all you want you never get a dry hit as long as you set the wicks up right so you know great atomizer in my book um, the only thing I don't really like about it I um, mean apart from the fill valve that's just personal opinion the uh, the airflow screw is loose in there so if you have it in your pocket and you're walking around it will loosen up on you then you have to find a screwdriver or carry one with you to tighten that back up to your desired airflow so what I did is I took that out put a little Teflon tape around it, put it back in, it's much, uh, much tighter in there. And, you know, as far as I know, Teflon shouldn't cause any problems with your juice. Um, you know, it's used as the insulator on the z uh, on the z a Pro UNG. Um, so, you know, Zen's okayed it and his devices are insured, so his insurance company has uh, okayed it. So, Teflon should be totally safe to be in contact with any juice that it might be in contact with so after putting that on there the juice stays right where I put it uh, not the juice the, the screw stays exactly right where I put it um, I, I find that at the the watch that I'm using being uh, you know at 1 ohm an 18650 the tank will last me about 1 18650 or approximately uh, to 18350s. Um, generally what I do is I just fill it up when I change the battery, give it a little top off. Uh, you can also get more tanks and extender tube. You can make it like as long as you want it really and just fill it with tons and tons of juice and uh, you know it'll get real long but it'll never run out of juice. So you know a lot of options there. Um, yeah. Like I said, excellent vapor production, excellent flavor. Uh, it's really the only atomizer that I ever carry with me anymore because it just gets the job done. Um, I also use a, uh, an iGo for dripping and tasting juices. Um, also a great atomizer and cheap as hell. Um, yeah, so also it, it does not leak. You can have this thing laying down, you can have it upside down in your pocket. Um, you, know, you can have it wherever you want. It will not leak at all. Um, so, 
big thumbs up there. And um, let me just make sure there isn't anything I'm missing here. Yeah, so yeah, uh, roughly $200, very worth it. If you have the cash and you're looking for a great vape, I would definitely pick one up. And uh, it looks real smart on a 22 millimeter device. So yeah, gets the approval in my book.